Here is one of my favorite, most used pieces of test equipment. You have seen this before. It has made appearances in many of my videos. The component tester. I got this one back in 2014. And since that was six years ago now, I decided let's get a new one of these component testers and see how it has changed. So here it is. And yeah, quite a bit different. So the first difference certainly is the price. I got this one for 32 euro. I think I could have gotten this for around 20 euro, but I wanted this shipped straight from Germany, so that cost a bit extra. This one came to me from China. It took forever to arrive, but I only paid 12 euro 42 cents for this. As you can certainly see, there are some differences between the two. There are new functions on this one, but there are also some functions missing. Let's first take a look at the most obvious differences. Of course, the greatly reduced size compared to this. Also, we have a different display on these two. This one has a very simple two-line LC display. This one has a fancy OLED display that can show you graphics like this one. The connections are also different. On this one, you have these three jacks, and it came either with this adapter or with some uh, test leads like this that plug into the unit. Now, as you can clearly see on the new one, this uh, connection block is built into the unit, but you do still get some uh, external connections for testing components such as transistors in a TO3 case, which of course you're not going to get into that socket. Um, this is what they look like now. You do have the uh, little clips. And then on this end, you have these um, connectors and you have to insert them into this connector and uh, lock them in place. That does take a bit of patience, I have to say. The power supply is also different. The uh, old tester uses a 9-volt battery. The new tester has a built-in lithium-ion battery, which is charged via this micro-USB port on the bottom. There is a charge indicator LED, and it does come with a very, very short charging lead. I have made quite a detailed test video on this old tester back in 2014, which I will link to in the video description. And back then, I used this to test quite a selection of uh, different components. And I'm going to do the same thing with this new tester. And in those cases where there is interesting differences between the old and the new, I will also bring in this old one into the test so that we can compare. So here comes the first candidate, a BC547B transistor. Let's test it. It is a bipolar junction transistor, NPN. Get the current amplification factor and the base to emitter voltage drop, as well as, of course, a diagram which connection is which. Next up is a really old AC128 germanium transistor. And I'll first test this in the old tester. Insert that, push the button, and one of the annoying properties of this limited display is we now have to wait forever for it to scroll through all these values until we finally get the current amplification and forward voltage. On the new tester, this is much better thanks to the new fancy high-resolution 
OLED display because, as you can see, you do get a full list. It shows all the values at once, so you don't have to wait anymore. Here is an IRFZ46N N-channel MOSFET. Again, I'm going to first test this in the old tester, because this is another improvement. It does the test. Now you can see we do have this rather confusing uh, way of displaying which connection is which. There is gate, drain, and source, but then there is also the little ESD protection diode. And it does get a little bit complicated. So on the new tester, again, it does take full advantage of the high resolution OLED display and it does draw you the full schematic of the end channel MOSFET with the ESD protection diode. And again, it does list all the values at once. Moving along, here we have a 1N4003 silicon diode. There it is, forward voltage drop 660 millivolts, as typical for silicon. Next, let's try this old germanium diode. And this is actually a bit strange. Voltage drop is slightly lower, but not as low as I would expect it to be for a germanium diode. And then finally, we have a BAT42 Schottky diode. And that has a really low voltage drop, 329 millivolts. Next up, we have a double diode. This is one of these components you find in switch mode power supplies. There is two diodes integrated into this one case. And in the video about the old component tester, for some reason, a double diode failed to test. Now, if I put this one into here and test it, as you can see, it does work. So I'm not sure what happened in the 2014 video about this tester. Maybe the double diode I tested back then was faulty. But of course, the same component can also be measured in the new tester, like so. Next up is a red LED. And it does show the operating voltage of the LED, 1.77 volts. But this is strange. The junction capacity shows up as zero picofarads. Let's compare that to what the old tester says. This one, see, the voltage reading is about the same, but this one says, five picofarads, which does make much more sense. Now, let's try another diode, this time a super bright white LED. You can really see how the test routine works in determining all the properties. See, this one Voltage is 2.85 volts, so much higher for a super bright white LED. Junction capacity now shows as 21 picofarads, so I'm not really sure why it shows such an odd value with the red LED. Next up is a resistor. Now, I normally measure resistance with a multimeter. Multimeter says this is a 100.4 ohm resistor. So let's insert it into the component tester and see what it thinks. 
101.4 ohms. And here we have a 100 nanofarad foil capacitor. And if we put this into the old tester, it tells us it is 100.1 nanofarads. Now, the new tester tells us a bit more than that because it doesn't seem to differentiate between small value capacitors and large value electrolytics. As you can see, we do get capacitance and also the equivalent series resistance. And here we have a large value electrolytic capacitor. 4700 microfarads, 16 volts. This is a 105 degree rated Panasonic capacitor. So this should be quite accurate. Now, most of the fancy expensive LCR meters can't actually measure capacitance as high as 4700 microfarads. A lot of them that I have seen will only go up to about a thousand microfarads. This component checker will test this capacitor, and it is important to short out the leads before testing, as it says down here. So after we've done the discharging, let's uh, insert the capacitor. And the way this tester works is it charges the capacitor, then discharges the capacitor while monitoring the voltage, and by that it determines the capacity. So testing capacitors does take a while. And we do get 4,200 microfarads. So I would say that is uh, this, this tester is a bit off. As I said, I do trust this capacitor. And here we have an inductor. Now, in the video about the old tester, I said that it could not measure inductance, but I was wrong. I probably just simply measured the wrong type of inductor, probably tried it with a, like a transformer or something. If I test this tiny little inductor, it is shown as a resistor. It does display resistance first, but you also do get an inductance reading, 0 0.1 millihenries. Now, on the new tester, that is a little more advanced, also thanks to the OLED display. This one shows the symbol of an inductor. Again, the inductance is 0 0.1 millihenries. There is the resistance, which once again, I mean, the other one was showing an ohm of resistance, this one showing zero. So, hmm, that doesn't seem quite right. Now let's discuss some features that are missing from the new component tester. On the old component tester, if you push and hold the test button, it enters a menu and you get the usual component tester mode, a frequency counter mode, a frequency generator, a 10-bit pulse width modulation generator, this mode that heaven only knows what that is good for, and switch off. Hold the button to execute the function. The new tester, if you turn it on and push and hold the test button, all it does is turning off. So it does not have this menu system. But I've never used this menu system on the old tester. I never needed any of those functions. So it's not something that I'm missing. But there are also some new functions on the new component tester that the old tester cannot do. Here is a Zener diode. And if I insert this into the old tester, it will detect two diodes in parallel and it will show the two voltages, 0.7 volts as usual, and three and a half volts which is a very imprecise reading. This is a 3.8 volt Zener diode. But if I insert this Zener diode, which is a 15 volt Zener diode, 
it will only detect a regular diode. So on the new tester, if you insert a Zener diode into the usual connections, you will get the same sort of result. But there are these three connections. And here, polarity does matter, cathode, anode, anode. So the stripe has to go to the cathode. But if I insert the 15 volt Zener diode into these connections, as you can see, we do get a 15 volt Zener diode. We can also test the 3.8 volt Zener diode, again, observing the polarity. There we go. That is our 3.8 volt Zener diode. And there is a second new function. You've probably all already seen this. There is an infrared sensor. And to use this, you push the button, wait until the tester says no unknown or damaged part, and then you aim a source of infrared light onto the sensor. And you can see right there, this red dot indicates that the sensor does see infrared. And if I use a remote control that doesn't have dead batteries, the tester will also decode the signal, user code, data code. I can uh, try various functions of this remote control, and you can see if the tester successfully decodes a signal, the dot turns blue. So that is another useful feature of this tester. Another accessory this new tester came with is this strange metal thing, and this confused me at first, but then I remembered also the old tester already had a self-test mode. And you initiate that by shorting all the terminals together, and that is what this metal piece is meant for. So if I push the test button, this tester, I have to confirm if I want to enter the self-test. If I don't push the button again, it just measures the two zero-ohm resistors. It also just showed the firmware version, which was version 1.1. Now, the new tester does not ask you anymore whether or not you want to do the self-test. If you short all the terminals together, like so, and push the start button, it goes straight ahead and does the self-test mode. And where the old tester gives you a display of which test it's performing and what parameters it's adjusting, this one just gives you a progress bar. Eventually they'll say, please isolate. So you remove the link and the self-test mode can continue. And once it has completed the self-test, it also shows you the firmware version, which is version 2.12. And then it returns into the testing mode. Now, the problem with uh, not letting you confirm if you actually want to do a self-test is, of course, if you do insert a damaged component, like a, a totally shorted transistor, that is also going to short all the terminals together. And rather than just telling you this transistor is bad, it'll start doing a self-test. So that would be very undesirable. And that's it. That is the evolution of the component testers. And I would say this new tester is better than the old tester thanks to its OLED display, which, well, I will have to mention that reading this from far away can be a bit difficult. Of course, this big display is easier to read than this high-resolution small display. But aside from that, this is a total improvement, and I can really, really only recommend these component testers. If you're getting into the hobby of electronics and you start buying your first test equipment, first of all, of course, you need a multimeter. But the second thing you should get 
is one of these component testers. Forget the oscilloscope. It will be a long time until you'll actually need that for an experiment. But one of these testers is always going to be useful. Thank you for watching.